Wait, 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 wait. Don't do it yet. Wait a second, we forgot something. This video was made possible through the support of the wonderful Mr. Paul Kidwell and dozens of other people just like you. If you're interested in being a part of this and helping out, check out the links below in the description. Get in the Discord, get involved, get on the Patreon, get moving, get making stuff happen. Thank you. Hi there guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm Chris Bowden and today we're doing part five on the Project Archie build and we're gonna get to mount our first motor. So to begin with, we get to play with sharp implements. They don't let me play with sharp things, not since the incident. All right, so we're gonna cut this off carefully. And it's just a little piece of heat shrink that holds the key in there. Now, the key is open to artistic interpretation. You should have it. It's a good thing to have. It's a keyed shaft, it's designed for it, it wants to be there. The problem is, the pulley we have, and this particular pulley is the XL15 pulley, it's not keyed. So it's not, it's not going in there unless you broach this. And you'd have to broach it for a three millimeter key. You can do it with a file, it's soft aluminum, but it's a monumental pain in the butt. And I don't think we have enough loading on here to justify it. Your mileage may vary, and I may come back and change my mind on that. I, who knows? This is my first time, man. Be gentle. What I'm going to do is pull the key out and wonder for a moment why they went through so much work to keep it in there. Because it's very sincerely in there. I may have to put this in a vise. Oh, you're in there. All right. I'll be back. Oh, fuck. Well, now we got a problem. How the hell do I get that out? I don't have a fucking pair of vice grips. Ah! Too much hammer for this. How the hell am I supposed to get that out? That is really most sincerely fucking in there. I gotta go to Home Depot and buy a pair of ice grips because I don't own a pair of ice grips and I can't think of any other way to get that out. Fuck. All right, guys, I'll be back. Ah! It's not working. Oh, that's doing it. So I'm just gonna put that on there. And just tap it out with a tiny little cold chisel. Ha! Yes! God! Oh, that was way more trouble than it needed to be. Yes! Okay, cool. Got that. And take two. Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden. Welcome back to the shop for part five on the Project Archie video. Today, you're gonna learn how to swear is what you're gonna do today because you gotta deal with this. This is our first stepper motor in the project, okay? Now this particular stepper motor is a 17HS15-1684D-HG 10-AR3. You're gonna have a bunch of different stepper motors in your kit. This is the J1 motor. And you can be sure of that because if you look at the, the instruction manual, it'll actually show the whole number there. And you need to know that. The problem is when you get this motor on the end of this shaft is going to be this little key. Now you can see that I'm holding the key in my left hand and the motor in my right. So Believe me when I say, fuck, you can get that out. Ah! Because there's going to come a time. It's not working. When you're not going to believe that. So here's what doesn't work. A really good pair of Nipex pliers. Ah, fuck. Doesn't work. They slip off. The biggest manliest pliers that Milwaukee makes, the 
the torque lock. Fucking pair of vice grips. At least the biggest that I could get at my local big box store. I gotta go to Home Depot and buy a pair of vice grips because I don't own a pair of vice grips and I can't think of any other way to get that out. Also, doesn't work. There, I just saved you 15 bucks teaching you that. What does work is the tiniest, weedliest little hammer you have. This is a Knox Tox, guaranteed forged steel, made in the USA. By, the Brid by Bridgeport, maybe it came by the same company that makes a Bridgeport mill. This little tiny hammer, you want a tiny hammer. Too much hammer for this. About this size is almost too much. And you want a tiny, tiny little cold chisel like this. You don't want a big one, you want a little one with a, a tiny point and a rather steep angle. Put this in a vise. I, you can see from the scratches, I bit mine in a vise here. And then I'll show you from the end, put the chisel right there like that and chisel in this direction. You're, you're actually chiseling into the key. We don't care about the key. The key is the enemy. The enemy needs to die. So the key sitting in there like that, and that's, that's how it looks. You chisel right here, lots of light little taps. You won't think it's working for a very long time, but keep gentle little taps. Don't wail on it or you're going to break the gearbox. Gentle little taps, be patient, lots of them and you'll see it start to move just a little bit. And the minute this starts to move, you're 99% of the way there because right after it starts to move, it's gonna fall out. That's your key. Then throw this across the room while swearing in rage and we're ready for the next step. The motor has to mount in a specific orientation on the mount because if you look at the J1 motor mount, you'll see that it's got the two long holes here and on one side, it's smooth and on the other side, it's got two little holes. So there's an easy way to tell which way this goes. The side with the holes points in the same direction as the wires that come out of the motor. So this goes on here like this. The chamfer side will be up and the holes go out the same side as the wires. This may or may not just pop right on yours. Don't worry about it. Just get it lined up to the holes. And then you're going to need um, some M4 by 10 flathead screws. And these will go in the countersinks on the thing. You're going to use a 2.5 millimeter Allen key or driver or whatever you happen to have. Make sure not to cross thread them. So we go backwards till it clicks and then forwards and just Barely in there, like you, you can see, you don't want all the way down, just, just down in there, okay? And we're gonna do this for each one. Backwards till it clicks. And then forwards gently, and just get it in there. Okay, and then we run them all down. We just, you can see I'm just using the lightest of fingertip pressure right, right out on the shaft. I'm not even grabbing the handle of it. Run them all down. And now you can see that's not seating yet because we gotta tighten these down all the way and that's gonna pull it on. But you wanna do it, there, see? You just, boop, just pops right on. And then you can run these down all the way. And just snug them down good. They don't need to be super tight. Because remember, we're going to come back and Loctite all this stuff later. All right, so we've got that on there. Now, into these two holes, we're going to put a pair of M3 by 10 grub screws or set screws. You'll understand why later, but basically these screws are going to go through into there and we'll use them to tension the belt on this. So these are M3 by 10 grub screws 
and you can just totally just put them in by hand and run them down. All right, so now you've got your motor mount on here. You've got all your, your screws in it and the uh, tensioning screws. So the next step, and you have to do these in order, is you put the pulley on here. Now this is the little 15 one. It's the uh, XL15 pulley. Eight millimeters, eight millimeters, everything lines up. Now when you put this together, see the keyway there? Now there's two ways to do this. You can cut a keyway in here. If you've got broaching equipment or a tiny file and a lot of patience, you can totally put a keyway in this pulley. I didn't because this is only for J1 and all this motor's ever gonna do is move the robot like that. So it's not gonna see massive amounts of torque loading. So what I'm gonna do is the alternate plan and I'm gonna slide this on and I'm lining it up so that one of the holes for the set screws is lined up with the keyway. So I can run a set screw right down into the keyway and that should be good enough. And I'm gonna grab my little toy hammer here and just lovingly, gently tap that home. I'm not gonna take that all the way down. I don't really know where this wants to line up. And I think I'm down far enough. All right. We'll see. If we have to adjust that, we can. It'll be a pain to get out, but it's easy to run it up a little bit more. So you'll get a little bag like this of just grub screws that comes with your drive, with the, with the bag that has these in it. So I'm assuming these are the grub screws for these. They use, it's an M3 grub screw, so you want a 1.5 millimeter drive to get them in. And you just gently run that in there, like so. And I'm gonna put them both in just fingertip tight before I tighten them down. And you can see that the screws sit at two different heights. So that tells me this one is definitely engaged in the keyway because it sank lower than the other one. Okay, so now that pulley is really most sincerely secured to the shaft. Now when we put this in here, we wanna make sure because we're going to be tensioning in this direction. So our tensioning screws are here and we're gonna want that on the back side of things like that. So you're gonna use four M4 socket head cap screws. That's the ones that look like this. And these are 20 millimeters long, so it's M4 by 20. And when you measure that, it's to the bottom of the head. So it's 20 millimeters from there to there. And you'll need four of the little washers. Now when I do my washers, I always put the round side on top and the sharp side on the bottom. Washers are made by being stamped, so if you feel the washer, one side will feel sharp and one side won't. Um, I put the sharp side down. That's how I was taught to do it. I'm sure there's some reason behind why it would matter. I don't think it really matters, but that's just how I do it. And those go in there, and you wanna run them all the way down and then come back like half a turn, maybe a turn. So all the way down, and then back a bit. And then do that for the other three. All right, so we got all four of those in there. And now we've got the motors mounted, but we can move it back and forth and even wiggle it just a little bit. So this lets us be able to tension it later when we put the belt on. But first, we gotta have something for the belt to engage to. So we're gonna install the J1 pulley and screws. Now the screws for this are these big ones here. And these are M6 by 14 screws. So we're gonna flip the whole thing over gently. Now looking at the bottom, we see our four holes on our main J1 spindle, and you just line this up to the four holes. Don't worry if it doesn't go all the way down, as long as you line it up rotationally, you're fine. Backwards till it clicks, and then in. All right, so that's all four of those. You'll need a M5 
Allen key for these and you want to run it down really gently because you want these to go down together. You don't want to put it on crooked or it'll bind up. So just run it down each one a little bit and this will seat down onto the shaft. And you'll feel it when you get all the way down. It'll feel like a rather positive stop. And then we're going to grab out here, snug those down good and tight. And now we can put the belt on. Now the belt you want is the 180XL belt. There's a bunch of different belts that come with the kit. It's really obvious which one fits this because it's the big long one. Now that tells me I'm too far down on that shaft. That needs to come out because you can see I'm going to I'm going to bind up in there. So I'm going to take this off and adjust that. I want to come down the better part of a quarter inch. And I got an idea on how to do that, so I'll show you how to do it too. But first, we have to take this thing off. So we're going to take our motor off. Okay, so we need that to come out a little bit. First thing I do is loosen the grub screws. In fact, I'm going to take grub screws right out because I don't know how far until that hits the shaft. And I've got one in that keyway and I don't want to screw it up. So I'm just going to take grub screws right out. Now this is called a drift. It's like a round metal punch. I'm going to put it right in here and see if I can tap that down a little bit, but I'm going to have to hold this in something. So, how are we going to do that? Ooh! Hey! You'll work great for this. I might even be able to just wiggle that down. Can I? Just a little bit? Not really. I don't know. We just moved. We just moved a fair bit there. That might work. Let's find out. Let's see if it's that easy. I got to get lucky once in a while. Let's flip this over. Yeah, we don't need the bearing races at the moment. I'll put this on the bottom. We can just hold this on there because it's going to sit flat against the thing. Oh, not quite. We got to move a little bit. Am I flat? I'm flat. Yep, we got. We need a little tiny bit. Um, can I just lever you? Just goosed it a little tiny bit. Oh, we're so close. That. Yeah, I want a little bit more. I want. What I'm trying to do is make sure that the pulley is far enough out because this has a little this has a little side fence on it. And I want to make sure that this is out far enough to keep the belt from rubbing on the bottom of the, the bottom plate. So yeah, you can totally just lever that a little bit. Oh, you're very close. Any further, I, mm, I have complicated feelings. That's good enough. Okay, I'm calling it there. So we're, we're that far down the shaft, okay? Which is about, oh, I don't know. We're almost exactly 
I'd say four or five millimeters because that's a five millimeter Allen wrench. So that just barely fits in there. So about five millimeters on the skinny side of five mils. All right, so we'll bring this up. Slip that in there and then flip the whole thing over. Get that out of the way and then put the screws in again. Wait, 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 wait. Don't do it yet. Wait a second. We forgot something. We got to put the grub screws back in. That's the one that's going into the keyway. So we're going to run that all the way down. You got to be careful with these little tiny screws because it's really easy to over torque them. And if you over torque them, you're going to strip out the aluminum because that, that pulley is made of really soft aluminum. Like we're, we're talking a tiny step up from just being straight dirt. And you don't want to strip that out or you're going to have a bad day. Okay, that's in there. Make sure it's pointing the right direction. Wires go out the back. And then fight it a little bit. I'm not. I'm just going to stick it in there and I'll fight the pulley. Or I'll fight the belt in a second. It's not that hard. And then we run the screws down again. And this is, this is the process with stuff like this. Sometimes there isn't a detailed spec or whatnot for where you want the pulley on the shaft. And you got to go through a guess and check process. And it's iterative. You, you just... Try it. Okay, well, try that again. We're a little bit closer this time. Try it again. We're a little bit closer. Oh, we went too far and you go back one. Yeah. Do that for three hours and you can tune a Tesla coil. Though there's a little bit greater element of danger with the Tesla coil than there is with this. All right, so that's in. Now we're going to flip it over. And we'll slide the motor forward and we can put the pulley on or put the belt on. Now the motor mount by having those on the slide things we can tighten this where we want it and it doesn't need to be ridiculously tight. What I'm going to do is put a little wedge in there and this is way overkill. Um, what's a good wedge? Oh hey this will work good. I'll put these in there and just with one finger, lever those back, and with my other hand, tighten these. And that's all the tighter that needs to be. It doesn't, doesn't require massive amounts of force. All right, now we can let go there. Our belt is reasonably tight, and now we have our whole belt drive assembly for J1. And that is super cool. Now at this point, whenever you turn this, you're turning the J1 stepper motor through its gearbox. So don't just grab this like because you'll do bad things to it. But, but now we have, last episode we got it to where it moved. Now we got it to where it holds still. So that's pretty cool. And I'm going to put those back in there for now, just for safety. All right, we have accomplished things and that took a bit of work. That was, that was harder than I expected, but we got there together and I appreciate you hanging out with me to do it. We have a thing where if we turn the motor, now the robot moves. And that, that's pretty neat. If we turn the little shaft on the motor, the robot moves. And in the next episode, we're going to learn about why we have this little nub of a shaft here, because this is where we're going to put the J1 encoder. So that's coming up in the next episode. Thank you guys for hanging out. 
And joining me with this, if you're interested in talking to other people who are building robots and doing stuff like this, check out the links below in the description. I have a Discord and you're invited. And it's a whole herd of people hanging out while we make these videos and even when we're not making these videos. Just hanging out in the shop, having a laugh, and building cool stuff. So, thank you. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden, and as always, we'll see you next time. Hi there guys, welcome back to the shop. We've got shit. And I'm an idiot. And when you do it wrong, take the whole thing apart because you skipped a step and forgot to put the fucking pulley on it. Fucking cut!